welcome back today we got a delivery this is actually a shipping victim uh, it was advertised on eBay as damaged during shipping and uh, he already made new knobs for it uh, which look okay they're 3d printed uh, lots of damage here I think the switch was bent I got some pictures uh, how it looked like when when he was shipped back to him um, yeah he sent it with Hermes it's a UK shipping company um, yeah and I had some interesting experience with these guys as well um, yeah it's a tech 475 200 megahertz scope uh, we don't know anything about it it was cheap and he said he was working before it was shipped and you got some pictures so I believe it was okay uh, what apparently happened is there was an impact here so it actually destroyed some switches inside and I could also just see that he printed one of these legs new that's a 3d printed part it broke off during shipping um, the other ones are broken as well so that's it's common on these scopes they just die uh, all the plastic parts look okay so far there's no big dents in the housing it's fairly clean uh, there is a bit of a bulge here so it may have been crushed a little bit I don't know apparently it comes with a manual that's what he said I've got an original tech probe yeah that's a tectronics probe that alone is probably what I, what I paid for. Uh, there is a manual, but this is only for... No, it's the whole... It's an original printed manual. Uh, good condition. Very nice. Um, well, it's not that I don't have enough scope, but the 475 is always, always water punt. And um, if we can't fix it, um, we'll find another one where we can use the parts as long as the CRT is not damaged uh, we'll see that in a minute when we take the cover off we may have a fair chance to fix it I just thought it's a nice addition to my collection it's a 465 with a DM44 on top of it uh, which is my go-to scope actually it's I just like it it's a good scope and here we have a 2245 which came to me technically free here we got a 464 which wasn't super cheap when I bought it but I have it for many years and did some repairs there's a video on my channel on repairing one channel of that uh, I think it's still missing the second part of the video but yeah it's back back working um, we got a sorry we got a Philips PM3310 which is a storage scope that's the reason why it's here uh yeah we got some other stuff there's a few more scopes up here uh i got a tech 555 and a tech 545 but they are too heavy for the workshop anyway let's have a look into this one and see what we find let me take the cover off and then plug them back the a trigger slope switch is a bit odd the pot seems to work or worst case that needs in, yeah. the shaft is binding when you turn it it changes the slope so this is not straight anymore this pot is a bit loose uh, so this has damage obviously these two knobs were 3d printed not bad actually I think he glued the original wheels onto it yeah I've I think I've seen some of those on eBay probably worth getting some um, I cannot see any significant damage on this side because these are just two pots that's just a pot with a switch so that can be replaced um, if you look in here these two wires they seem to be very close together and if you turn the time burst venue it's moving the pot around so something isn't right here that may have got a 
a thing as well. So we need to separate these wires a little bit. Uh, basically, it's just ah, look at that. It's broken off. This is actually broken off here. Yeah. Uh, now the wire is in the way. There, at the end of my screwdriver, this thing belongs here, and it's broken off. That may be one of the reasons why you can't get a trace. All right. Let me check out what the switch is doing. Okay, interestingly enough, no matter which position, this thing doesn't switch. And the question is, why is this so broken here? I think we need to take the top board out first. Um, and have a look inside what's going on there. But it doesn't look been impacted. This had an impact. This had an impact. But this, yeah, possibly it had one. That's still working. So the pot at the end may not work anymore. I can pull the drawing and see what this thing is doing, but that would be one of our problems here. Yeah. Um, Okay, one found. Let's carry on. What else we're gonna find? So we check the mains fuse and it's uh, Tektronics Guernsey. So this is sort of UK production. Uh, voltage selector is correct. We had to fit a plug because he decided to cut it off, probably to avoid that someone with no knowledge turns it on. I did a quick check. Insulation resistance looks good. No major shorts. Um, yeah, either pops the fuse. I put a 3 amp fuse in the plug, so and there is a fuse here as well. So if it pops, it shouldn't turn the lights off here. All right, let's turn it around and uh, turn it on. See what happens. Thank you. No fun. No fun. I'm not sure if it's fun. I'm not sure if it's just for anything, but I don't need to choose a blunt camera if I move to it. I tend to choose. There is a little bit of it. Okay, we're not getting anything out here. But I can see some solar traces on that heatsink here. And also the resistor. I don't know if it's visible, is somehow mangled. There is some solder on that heatsink here, which isn't right either. So I think we take the covers off and have a quick look. I can't see any signal coming out. I was feeding 0.5 volt peak peak rate, uh, square wave and I, nothing came out at the back. So let me take the cover off. From, starts with channel one because they're both not working. Okay, the good news is all the cams are working here. These little cams, they're all working. The first one is the, I don't know if it's visible. The first one is AC-DC coupling, and less than DC. And that's the coupling capacitor. And if we turn, it's probably very hard to see, but if we turn, whole thing the switches are actually moving so there is a good chance it's working so we got 0.5 volt peak peak and let's see what comes out of here yeah something coming out the scope is powered off so one of our problems is in fact this point here because that heatsink shorts towards that thing here. This is bent for a reason. Yeah, look at that. There's a reason why these are bent somehow. And I'm 
this may sort it out because now now I'm getting something out of here so let's try the second channel something out of here but that resistor is a little bit but that probably needs work because there is that resistor has been treated badly here so there we go so that's that seems to work so the attenuator is working which is good. The whole purpose of the action was finding out if the damaging of the knobs has caused any issues with the with the attenuator, but apparently not. At least not as far as I can see. So that's at least something. Because his description was it destroyed the inner workings whatever that means uh, so what can it be the, the the most tricky one is the attenuator because it's cam switches and that's you don't want to mess with those um, all the other stuff are simple switches so you can probably get there and uh, yeah we'll carry on so we're a little bit further we did a few checks on the voltages and uh, the minus eight was completely shorted out. Yeah, it was a solid short to ground, and we pulled the board up to disconnect this connector because the minus eight is coming from this connector, and the short was still present on this board. And then I pulled all this pots out on the stuff on this one and it suddenly disappeared so we may have just a short somewhere on this maybe just one of the connectors was the wrong way around who knows let's look into that further well, we need to pull the board anyway because um, the the broken wire on that pot we need to fix that but yeah, let me put this, some of these plugs back and find, maybe it's just the wrong way around or so, who knows. <laughs> 